Hello, my name is Dante Renee, and welcome to the 10 Room Bizarro YouTube page where I talk about films that I believe need to be talked about more. Like tonight's film, 1980s, Young, Wild, and Wonderful. This is put out by VCX Video, and I am blanking out uh, the breasts on this actress um, with the name of Candy Barber. This is Young, Wild, Wonderful, and Wonderful, 1980. Let's get the glare off right here. And this is put out on VCX video. I can show you the back. There we go. Here's some uh, images from the film right there. And this is put out by VCX. VCX is uh, kind of um, the the long-standing um, adult film dis uh, distributor. And nowadays we have Vinegar Syndrome. Vinegar Syndrome has not put this film out yet. Uh, maybe they never will, but VCX is putting it out for us. Um, it's on DVD. And um, these are not easy to come by, but it looks like VCX put this out in 2007. So very interesting stuff here. Young, Wild, and Wonderful 1980. And this stars Arcadia Lake and Merle Michaels. You'll know them from Debbie Does Dallas. Also Candy Barber, who's on the cover. Hillary Summers, Eric Edwards, also from Debbie Does Dallas, and tons of other things, and many other actors here. Um, so... Including an actor from, I believe his name is George Payne, from a movie that I reviewed on this YouTube page from the director of Last House on Dead End Street, Corruption. So, let's get into this film here. Young, Wild, and Wonderful. An X-rated film from 1980, right here. Young, Wild, and Wonderful. You know, <clears throat> we have a bunch of students taking a school bus trip to a museum. And... It's in their encounters with ancient art, sculptures, paintings, that the story truly begins. Um, in reality, in fantasy, and artistically. This is young, wild, and wonderful. You know, when you first wa start to watch this movie, you immediately believe it's, it looks like a teen sex comedy. But you know it's X-rated, but it's a, it has like a teen sex comedy type feel. But it's like a... The, the, this thing really starts to morph and change and go into different directions that are unexpected, especially for the first sex scene. But let's start off with the music for Young, Wild, and Wonderful. Because it sounds like a typical type of film, right? It sounds like... Oh, a bunch of teens, they're in a school bus, they get into some hijinks, some sexual hijinks when they go on their trip. Uh, it's much more than that. <laughs> when we look at the music first, we kind of have, we start off with the feel of sex comedy type music. Uh, rock, pop, 80s, late 70s sounding stuff with lyrics. And then we also have some 70s disco Real hard disco kind of funk, bass line, groovy, powerful, almost at times might remind me a bit of Alex Dorenzi's type stuff, like his soundtracks, but really, you know, just very, very funky, and if you're any fan of 70s disco, funk, things of that nature, you would love that, that section of music in here. But then we also have this weird horror experimental electronica soundscapes that really sound like you're entering into the long corridors of uh, a late 70s horror film. And there are some hallways in the movie as well. We also have period-like music, you know, older music, ancient music, or maybe Renaissance-type sounding music, according to what is happening in the movie. But then we also have tropical jungle music with some chanting as well, which also happens accordingly to what is going on in this wonderful movie. Now, Young, Wild, and Wonderful, you hear the title... I'll put up the original poster art on my Facebook page for Ten Room Bizarro, but this is the DVD uh, cover art. And even, you know, this and the original cover art, you, you, you're kind of thinking, you know, titles sometimes can be very misleading. We all know that. Uh, titles, even, a lot of people don't think about it for X-rated films, and a lot of times they make fun of the titles, you know. Um, but you start to watch the movie and you realize there's a lot more going on in this movie, and this is one of those cases. Art is actually the focus of this film and the theme of the movie. Actual real art pieces, as if you went into an actual real art museum. So, very interesting stuff. Now, give me one second, folks. 
Okay, I thought my nose was bleeding, but it's not. Okay, good. Um, there's one primary location in this film, but almost uh, really one primary room in the film. So it's not just a location, it's actually a room. But this is not your typical, oh, it's a couch and people haven't said, no, 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 no. It's an actual, like, art class of sorts, but in a museum. So done by kind of a professor, someone who's extremely knowledgeable. Um, I have some notes up here, so you might see my eyes divert. People exist in almost different worlds or vacuums in this film, in essentially two different rooms at this location, other than the main room of an art museum. It's lacking elements of time and people are disappearing and, and being in their separate worlds for long durations of time where you've almost forgotten about them and then you revisit them near the end of the film and they were still there, they were still involved in what you saw them involved with near the beginning of the film. The sex scenes in this movie are based mostly on non-reality. You know... The, the the idea of fantasy is obviously not something that's that's going to be foreign to the X-rated genre, but the way that it's being done here, when when in reality the the X-rated films are in fact fantasy, um, but playing that here is very very interesting. Um, the, these non-reality sex worlds are inspired by real art pieces. It almost could feel like the vibe of uh, of a horror movie also in some ways. There are certain sections of this film, not because anything you know scary is happening, it just feels like a horror film. And then with those different pieces of music in there as well, it really kind of gives you that vibe of something ominous or something happening. And it's mysterious, it feels... You know, in an art museum, after hours, um, like that movie One Dark Night, which is, I think is in the mausoleum after hours. And you kind of have this after hours vibe going on here that is disconcerting in some ways. This is a movie of characters, mysterious characters, the bus driver, the art teacher, the old man teacher, the younger woman teacher, totally insanely disrespectful students. And this random man in a, in a, in one of the rooms of the museum in his office. What is he doing in there? And dealing with surreal fantasy and the mind in this film. The themes of art and fantasy. You could almost throw it back on the genre of X-rated films or on this film in particular. Um, is it is it art? Is it fantasy? Is it both? Is it neither? The first sex scene in this film is a rape. So when you first start the film off, you get the teen sex comedy vibe. This is going to be a really kind of a fun, X-rated sex comedy romp. But then it starts off, and, um, you know, about 10, 15 minutes in, and you're like, what? What? <laughs> um, and... and, and you know, the interesting, it sucker punches you with what you think the movie is from the opening credits to what it becomes in the first sex scene. Now, we have wild dialogue in this movie involving incest and virginity, wild, sexual, explicit, uh, you know, porn dialogue. We have ancient worlds visited in this film tropical worlds visited in this film the the different rooms and worlds and countries and huts of the mind of fantasy of the mind um you know we have different types of lighting throughout this film different sets different designs of the mind um in terms of there's some very wild fades in this film you think you've seen some wild fades a couple of them in like revenge of the cheerleaders which i reviewed in this youtube page and other films like that um sex comedy type cheerleader films the fades in this film are by far the most wild and the most abundant i've seen um so it's it's pretty impressive the fades in here i mean you know we got swipes coming down here up here down like here circularing in i mean it, it's it's like there's so many swipes and fades in here it gives you a kind of a it kind of emphasizes a little bit of the of the sex comedy vibe although it's much deeper than that in a way 
we have very, very close up shots sexually in this film. Um, very close. Almost at times for the first half of the film, you, you don't even have proof of that who you're seeing is actually the ones, you know, inserting their penis in the vagina. Um, so it's, as the film goes on, the camera kind of backs up a little bit, which is very interesting. Uh, we have ejaculating in hands. We have one girl and multiple guys. We have two girls and one guy. Uh, we have one old man with one a young girl student. Some very big stars of the time period of the golden age of porn in this movie. But you never know how long uh, they will be on screen in the different rooms or fantasies of this very interesting movie. There's a very bizarre ending in this movie as people split up throughout the museum and also a funny piece at the end of the film also uh, that involves underpants and a school bus. Um, you know, Young, Wild, and Wonderful, obviously, you know, with the title, was playing off of uh, kind of a uh, schoolgirl porn type of vibe, but this film, I don't think people were going to be expecting what they were going to be getting when they watched this film because a film that is focused on art guiding the sex scenes um, and the influence of, of art uh, within your mind triggering fantasies. Not only that, it could raise some big questions about uh, art being porn or not, and maybe that was something that was, you know, flying back and forth here, I don't know. In some ways, you could almost see this film being the X-rated Stendhal syndrome from Dario Argento. Um, you know, I, I, it very, very interesting stuff going on here. Now, the director of this film, I believe, directed Debbie Does Dallas, so that explains some of the um, same people that were in the film um, that were here. Uh, the girls in the film are, um, you know, all different types in here. Uh, this girl's one of my favorites in the movie, Candy uh, Candy Barber. I've never seen her before uh, so far. And uh, you also have Arcadia Lake, who is this girl here, who is in Debbie Does Dallas in the record store scene. Um, and uh, you're a large variety of people uh, in this film. And, of course, uh, Hilary Summers as a blonde. Um, she uh, is in... As, as a brunette in a movie that I've reviewed in this YouTube page called Star Virgin. She plays one of the cheerleaders. You can check that out. Uh, put out by Vinegar Syndrome. But this is young, wild, and wonderful. Art, fantasy, sexuality in non-reality. Abrupt, weird ending. Um, but funny. This is Young, Wild, and Wonderful, 1980. Thank you so much for watching the 10 Room Bizarro YouTube page where I talk about films that I believe need to be talked about more, like this one, Young, Wild, and Wonderful. Um, put out by VCX. You can get it on Adult DVD Empire, which is where I got it, or CD Universe. You get to look around. Those are the two sites I look around the most, actually, Adult DVD Empire and CD Universe for these rare adult titles that Vinegar Syndrome is not putting out. Uh, they're varying in quality. Sometimes they look like VHS rips, so on and so forth, but it's the only way to get them unless you want to find you know, some stream online somewhere, um, but uh, to have a physical copy. Um, please feel free to check out all my other reviews in this YouTube page. Other adult films, uh, Exploitation, Sexploitation, Jess Franco, Joe Sarno. There, there's tons of stuff on here. Uh, Valerian Borochek, uh, teen sex comedies, um, horror, surreal, bizarre, softcore, hardcore. It's all here. The Black Emanuel series. There's, there's tons of stuff on here. Also, please feel free to check out my own personal films by Googling Apartment 1014 Films. Thank you so much, folks, and have a great night.